Hello listener, uh, this is the student score booster, your online tutorial class for JAMB, WAEC, SSEE, NECO, GCE, NAPTEP uh, students. Today, we shall continue from uh, where we stopped in our last presentation on one of the important subjects that cut across this uh, examination, that is accounting uh, last time we discussed we started the introductory aspect of this subject and uh, we employ you to kindly li uh, listen or view our previous uh, lecture before you listen to this uh, today we shall continue as i said on the introductory aspect of this subject that is a part two you can go through the part one before you listen to this one. Uh, my name is Mutalib Anifooshe. And after today's class, we are expected to understand the purpose and the function of a source document. If you could recollect from our last present, uh, presentation, we've discussed uh, briefly about the accounting circle and uh, we mentioned about source document there. So in this presentation, we shall know more of the detail of this document. Also, we shall be able to understand uh, what we refer to as books of original entry, then also to discuss the concept of accounting equation. And lastly, we'll be focusing more on the ledger and uh, its classification. Uh, the source document, if we could recollect based on our last presentation, that accounting uh, process begins from the source document. It's a paper or business paper that serves as a basis of accounting uh, process. And a source document can briefly be defined as a business paper that shows the nature of a transaction and provide all the, the, all the information needed to account for it properly i.e. to account for the transaction properly. It gives all the details of any transaction between two parties. If you remember based on our last presentation, we said transaction can two place between uh, uh, government to government, government to individual, individual to company, company to government, and so on and so forth. So the, 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 a, a paper or a document that gives all the details of those uh, transactions is what we refer to as source document. As I said, this document serves as the basis of uh, accounting for, for recording and accounting uh, entry. Uh, we must take note at this point that we cannot understand what accounting is all about or we cannot prepare a, a kind of relevant accounting document accounting without having a relevant source document. If we have a faulty source document, the final account we are going to prepare at the end of the year will also be 40. And uh, any decision making from it will also be 40 and misleading to the users of a financial statement. So uh, that is why we, 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 the company will always try as much as they could to have a proper source document in place because it will serve as a basis for accounting. Now, we shall be looking at some of these source documents uh, that are applicable or in day-to-day -day activities of any business organization. Uh, normally, we should not look at this as a document that is applicable to maybe sole proprietorship, partnership. It all the form of business organization that you have learned in your commerce or economies, ranging from sole trader to partnership to joint venture to organization that are uh, listed uh, the, the, the register company and so on and so forth. They are all required to have the source uh, document. So these are some of these documents and their meaning. One, the first one is car sales slip. A car sales slip is a source document and it's a business form that shows the detail of transaction in which good or service are sold to a customer for cash. This is the most important point here. Whenever a company made a sales uh, and that sales is based on cash basis, then the document they will issue 
to acknowledge the receipt of the money to the customer is what we call as a say sleep. Uh, I think we need to take note of this. Probably if you look at our day-to-day -day activity, somebody will give you an invoice. But by the time we come to this second one, we know when to issue invoice and when to issue says a uh, car says a uh, sleep. An invoice, uh, as name implies, it is a sales invoice. It's a business form showing the details of a transaction in which goods or services are sold on account. Please, when we say on account means on credit. On credit, that's the meaning of account. You can now see that whenever you sell something on credit, you give invoice. Sales invoice. However, whenever you sell something uh, to customer for cash, then you give cash sales slip. Let's take note of this. Very, very important. Now, the next document is a process invoice. A process invoice is a business form like sales invoice representing the, a process of goods or services on account. As I told you, on account means on credit. So basically, what we need to take note from these two is that whenever we buy or sell something on credit, then what we are going to have as an acknowledgement of that particular transaction, form of sales document, uh, 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 what we call it, source document, is invoice. Please take note of that. Is invoice. Invoice is on credit. Whereby the slip, sales slip, or process slip is what we have uh, on a cars uh, for a cars uh, transaction. Uh, not only that, we also have a check copy. A check copy is a document supporting the accounting entry for payment by check. Whenever you make a payment by check, then there will be a copy of that particular check. At times, it can be a photocopy, a duplicate of that particular check or some other means through which the company will acknowledge the payment or the receipt of the, of the checkbook or of the check uh, slip. That, you, that is being used to effect the payment for a transaction that takes place between individuals. And uh, these are supporting documents. Can you imagine if any of these documents are faulty? It doesn't mean that the other thing we are going to get from them we also we would call it be faulty. That is why the source document is very, very important and we need to understand them apart from the exam purpose to all to know the day-to-day -day activities. When case we graduated or we finished our program and we might need to work in any of the organization, uh, the, the, the experience we learn through the uh, classes like this will automatically guide us to know how to become a good accountant and to keep adequate record uh, going forward. The next item we are going to consider is cash uh, received daily summary. You want to buy it by the time you make a sales and you are getting this, you are making this sales on cash basis. For example, you work in a supermarket. Every day, every every hour, people come to buy. You collect money, you keep it, you record it in a. Some people record it in form of a, uh, uh, in form in the form of a uh, journal or ledger or just ordinary exercise book. Record it. At the end of the day, you need to calculate what the cash you have, if we tally with the one in the book. So that document you 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 use to summarize this transaction for the whole day is what we refer to as cash received daily summary. It's a business paper that lists. The money coming in from customer and the cash receipt uh, list is the source document for accounting entry for cash uh, receipt. So we, we need to take note of that. All the cash receipt you receive in a particular day, then that should be the evidence to acknowledge that the amount of money, as I said, is tally with the one you have, uh, the actual cash we have with you. Then the next item here is what we call bank advice. Bank advice, our advice is of two types. We have debit and we have credit advice from the from the bank. Uh, a, a, a bank debit advice is a document or a, is a bank document informing the business of a decrease made in a business account, a business bank account. Remember last time I was when our pre, in our previous presentation that whenever you want to start a business, the entity concept uh, guide us that the ownership should be different from the from the from the business. I.e., you need to open an account for the business itself. So whenever you are uh, uh, maybe transfer business with uh, with third party, then that should be the business. Should, the, the business will be uh, the transfer should be taking place 
between the business and the third party, not between you and the third party as a owner of the business. So whenever there is a, a, a decrease in the bank account, then the bank will give you what we call a debit advice. This is common. Some of us that we go uh, to bank and withdraw. Whenever you withdraw with your ATM, for example, immediately you will say it will be a debit alert. That's the advice given to you by a bank to tell you that the amount of money you have in your, in your account with us has, has, been, has been reduced to the amount of withdrawal you have made. And uh, you can also have a credit advice from the bank which shows that you have, you have an increase or increment in your bank uh, account balances with the bank. For example, somebody paid the money to you or for you or you also go there to deposit yourself immediately you receive a credit uh, alert. So these are some of the uh, uh, source document. We, we have quite a number, we, we may have other than this, but the, the, my, 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 the point of uh, emphasis here is, especially the students that are writing jam, examiner might define any one of these and give us any of this option. So we must know what each of these stand for. And for the students that are writing WAHEC, examiner can list any one of these and want us to explain them they can even ask us to list and explain them and this should be a free mark uh, question now if you look at these uh these two examples we pick from your past question for utme student uh, the examiner said the major feature of an invoice what an invoice invoice is a document that shows credit says remember or credit that is credit says or credit is uh, process as we, as we define it in the previous uh, slide and we said it gives forth examiner said the major feature of in, an invoice is that it passes information through the sales day book we have no mentioned this it has cash a bank column we have no mentioned this it specifies the particulars of good bought possibly it, indi it uh, indicate only cases no cases is uh, is a what we call a cast says a slip. So the option is C. I hope you, we, we understand that. Then there's the question that's 2010, question number 7. Question number 8 of the same year, the same UTME exam, the source document include cast book. We have general ledger with no mention of this. Credit note, no, with no mention of this. Which or the other? The, the, the answer should be uh, a, a petty cast book. Petty cast book is also a source day book. By the time you 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 are you, you you remember the way we are going to uh you way you maintain your petty cast book. If you don't know by the time we have the petty cast book, you'll be able to know uh what petty cast book is all about. A petty cast book is a is a is a is a is a is a, is a, cast, is a cast book where you record your day your your, your kind of uh miscellaneous expenses on daily basis as you spend those amount of money they reimburse you using impress system. We shall know more of that later on. But the option here is also an example. As I told you what we mentioned in the last slide is not exhaustive. It's just an example or some example of this particular uh, source book. So you also need to read more on your various recommended tests. you know more of this. Now, uh, in June 2014, this is Wayek. Examiner also asked the Wayek student to, to the, the, the one question here that the source document used to make entry into process day book. Actually, we've not done that, but Process day book is also used for taking care of credit sales, and that will be what invoice. Invoice is the correct answer here. By the time we have the process uh, process day book, we shall know more of that uh, later on. So this is the uh, what we need to take what we to know as regard the uh, source uh, document. So the next objective of this presentation is to look at the the concept of book of original entry. Uh, the book of original entry is built on source document. So remember last time in our last presentation, we we give we explained the uh, accounting cycle. We started from the transaction between two parties. Then we have our invoice that is the document. Then we move from there to uh, book of original entry. So the book of original entry is built on source document. So this original entry, these books are. Uh, made up of the following uh, uh, item. One is general ledger. General ledger is a, a, a book of original entry that can that can used to record 
or account for all the transactions that are now within the scope of other books of original entry. For instance, sales day book is meant for taking care of recording credit sales. Return inward day books is used for recording the return from the customer to the business. We call it sales return or return inward. If you sell maybe two or a unit of product to a customer and the customer returns 20 of it, you, you sell this one on credit, it will be recorded in uh, what do you call it? In the sales day book. If they return part of this, maybe due to uh, misspecification of order or damages in transit, as case may be, it might be maybe they were, and some other factor might respond for that, then what we return, what we call sales return. That shall be recorded in the sales return day book, what we call return inward. Return inward. It's coming in from outside. Then the next item, uh, the next document is process day book. The process day book is book or is a document used for recording credit process. Not cash process, please, credit process. Like sales return, we also have process return. When you have policy return, that means that when you buy something from a, a supplier, um, maybe due to a specification error, you return part of them back to the supplier, then you are going to have a document referred to as process return day books, or what we call return uh, outward. This one is return inward. Return inward. This one is return outward. It's going out of the company hand because the company is giving back to the supplier of the goods. So, as I said, one thing we need to take note of this is that this item here, this one, this, this and this, deal with credit transaction credit transaction that is what we buy on account when we make any sales or we acquire products or goods based on cash basis then we use cash book we use cash book that is why the cash book itself is referred to as book of original entry here please take note of this cash book serve as ledger we are going to see subsequently later on it also serve as book of original entry because if you make any cash you receive money from the customer or we make a payment to the supplier both maybe on cash basis then it will be recorded in a cash book another thing we need to take note here is that petty cash book is also a book of original Entry. Remember, we, we look at it as a source book last time. So it's, it's our source book because we make uh, whatever we buy uh, in a petty form are being recorded here. So it can serve as a basis, as a source, source book to main cast book here. I hope you get it now. The, the cast book itself is book of original entry. But we can update our main cast book from petty cast book. It does mean that petty cast book will be a source document to the cast book. That is why we pick it as option in our previous uh, uh, exa example we, we just add now now there are other items that might not be in form of selling of goods or services for example if you acquire an asset that is not within the goods or service therefore what we are going to have there is that the asset you acquire will enter into general journal that is why we define general journal as a book of original entry that take care of any other item that are not within other uh, all these other things we've mentioned here. So we are going to do more of that later on, just for us to have overview of this particular item here. Now, if we move ahead, let's look at the example of each of these uh, 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 book of original entry. We start from the sales day book. Remember, sales day book when goods are sold on credit the the, the the amount of that goods are entered into sales day book please on credit basis and this this book this uh, this book has three column 
the main column is a gross sales, including fat. You know, we usually have value added uh, statement. And uh, if you come here, let's quickly look at the format here. This is a gross. This is a gross side total. It involves both. The, that's the entire money you have. This is a gross element here. Then this particular gross is being analyzed into two columns again. Take care of follow added tasks and the next says. This is the fact on this. And uh, if you have the fact on this, then this is the net sales. Net sales is our own. We only collect fat on behalf of the task authority. It's not part of ours. Fat added task is not our own. Remember, by the time you come to the proper accounting, we see how we compute this uh, fat. Just for us to know that whenever we sell goods, you withdraw, we you take, we, we, we withhold fat, a fat added task from it. Our own, the, 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 the one that belongs to the company is the net sales. This one belongs to that authority. We are going to what we call input and output fat, but it's beyond the scope of this presentation. So then from this sales day book, please let's take note of this. From sales day book, where do we move? From you move from the source document to sales day book, remember? Then from our sales day book, we now go into either general ledger. Or what we call a nominal ledger. We will discuss ledger in the next, uh, uh, the, before the end of this presentation, we shall know more about ledger. But basically, if the, the, the whatever we have in our sales day book, we go to ledger here. Yeah. It's possible when we open our sales day book uh, in, at the beginning of the year, remember, so we originally this particular document take care of credit sales. Maybe before the end of the year, for example, some of these is, uh, some of these credit says the debtors have paid back. The one they have paid become a cash document. Therefore, it will move to the general ledger. That document, that that uh, what do you call it? That portion that has been uh, paid. But the ones that still remain outstanding, un unpaid for, at that particular period, or that is the end of the year, shall move to the what do you call it? A debtor ledger. That is debtor means somebody that is owing us uh, money. For example, if you look at this little example we have here, just to demonstrate how this is being done in, uh, on, in, in, in a very practical form, assuming that we have a company that on 1st of June sold goods on credit to JNOS, the invoice is 5,400 Naira. Remember, we are only interested in our home. Please, the invoice, if you look at the invoice, invoice there is on credit. This invoice will have still give us the detail. Remember, we said the invoice is a source document. It will give us the details of the transaction. The invoice will also tell us the gross. It will tell us uh, the, 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 the fat element and it give us the net. So if the invoice, the net amount in the, in the invoice is this one, which is our own. And that is what we have here. You can see we have June 1. Details, look at the format. Please, if you are asked to prepare this, especially for the YX students, you must follow the format. Format is very, very important. The format for details, is important. the date is important. The details is also very, very important. Here is folio. That is for reference purpose. Then this is invoice number. Please take note of this. this all this we have here is for us to be able to carry out verification. Probably for auditing purpose or for other... Uh, if there's any mistake or any error, we can simply come and look at the invoice or this particular uh, book of original entry to correct the error as expected. Now, this person have this ledger. This is uh, the, the, the debtor ledger one, and the invoice is uh, invoice number one. Look at invoice number one here. The next says is this amount. Then this is the fat element of this, and uh, this is what we have as total uh, says. Total sales, as I told you, only represent two components, the fat and the net. Net belongs to the company, fat belongs to the uh, to the to the government. Then on the same uh, the same company on 4th of June sold goods on credit to uh, T really in uh, real. The invoice is number two and is 6,500 naira also. The same thing also happened. So if you continue, if you continue, continue, continue up to this point. Then you shall we, we have half the total at the end of the of the of the period. 
So at the end of the period, we must take note of the uh, what we go to our uh, debtors ledger and what also go to the uh, to the fat account because we are going to open the fat account also. That's what we call input. Uh, what we call it input uh, fat, and we are going to also have what we call output output uh, fat. Now, if we sell these goods and probably the customer return part of it to us, then we are going to have what we call a, a sales return day book or what we term as return inward. I've told you the other time, return inward. Return inward is, the, is that day book that account for the goods returned to the company by the customer. A business will issue a credit note. So that's why credit note cannot be a source document. It's not a source document at all. It's just a credit note to show when uh, the goods previously sold are returned due to faulty or damage, or damage, or where the price charged on the original invoice were miscalculated and need to be what corrected. So let's take note of this. This is another point we need to take note of. For example, in June, the first man that we sold goods to. Uh, to this uh, north brought back some of this item here and uh, he brought back some of this item that cost uh, a gross amount of 492 our the fat element is this as i told you with the way we calculate fat is not our major problem now our major problem now is just to appreciate the format of this the fat can be calculated for example if this is a net then i will have fat of uh, 120 uh, top 23% when you multiply your net multiply by 1.23 it will give you 492 so that is the important thing we need to take note of so and the fat is not always 23% this one is just for explanation I think in Nigeria, Nigeria fat is about 10% so in exam if something I want to give to you they can use any figure or what they want to know is whether you know how to apply uh, the fat. Now, the person return this goes, and this is the net of the money, this is the fat element, and this is total sales. You, you, you take note of that. Then, on 8th of June, the, the other guy also returned a goes worth 200 naira. Then the fat element is also this, and the total gross is this. So, this is what we are going to have in the return uh, inward. This return inward, we are we shall see how we treat it by the time we come to the normal account proper. This is just to explain the book of original entry, as we said. Now, the next item is purses. Whenever you have a purses day book, we told you purses day book, like sales day book, also deal with uh, uh, with uh, what do you call it credit uh, purses. They said this book record a credit purses, the main column, like what we have here. Is also recording the total including fat. We allow this one into two. Into two, uh, and the two is fat and net process. The information from process day book is used to update your no, no general ledger or creditor ledger on monthly basis. Like what we have there, we also have two examples here. We process goods on credit. The invoice number is 34. Here, enforcement number is 35 from Clark and Jones, and they will record it accordingly. This is creditor ledger one, creditor ledger two, because whenever you buy something from somebody on credit, that person becomes your creditor. That's what we are saying. The other time you have debtor ledger. So with this, the same thing also applicable. This, the same calculation, the same way of doing it. But the you, the, the most important thing we must take note here is that we are not going to discuss that one here. The treatment of fat here. And the other fat we have there. Why this one is called is referred to as input fat. The other one is referred to as a what? As output uh, fat. Take note of that. You can come in form of OBJ. The examiner can ask you the fat that is being uh, deducted on all uh, uh, attached to the process is an input. Input uh, because we bring in the product in uh, into the company. Then when we have any uh, return, well, we return some of this product to our supplier then we are going to have what we call process return day book or we call return uh, outward as we said last time return outward so when you have return outward 
it help us also to take care of whatever that has been uh, uh, that uh, that has been given to the customer. You know, uh, you you have a return to you return goods to supplier due to damage or fault, or maybe there is an oversight of invoice from the supplier, or there is any other reason, any other reason. Maybe it's not even damage, may even be due to what miss specification. Maybe when you place order. The, the, the what they give to you is not what you specify. Then when they give you a wrong order, you return it back to them. Of course, when you go, when you get the book, first of all, you first of all maybe uh, put them into the book. But by the time you are trying to uh, check details of this item, you discover that some of them are below the size or oversize. So with that, you can easily uh, you can easily return them back and you record them into return uh, the books. So these are the way and manner we uh, we we maintain all these uh, book of original uh, entry likewise please take note especially for the yx student you need to look at the date the details details tell us the the, the name of the the other party then this is a folio or this one is just for reference and uh, you have a credit is a possessed possess, return day book you have your credit a creditor ledger Maybe this one is a one creditor, number one, creditor number two. If you have three, you put the name. Probably maybe you have M and if you for example, as a third person, you are going to have creditor L3. Maybe the the the, the uh, invoice number, the credit note here, because you are returning the credit note, maybe the credit note is uh, 36 or 36. Then the amount will follow. Then at the end of the day, you are going to have total. This one is total, total of these two. Likewise, this is total. Likewise, this is total. So, from this particular day book, now we now move to ledger. We are going to see where we have where we are move, moving to as we move ahead. Uh, if you remember what I am trying to uh, let you know is that we cannot prepare any reasonable account without understand these elementary uh, uh, element of uh, syllabus. And I would like you to take time to understand this. So that by the time we come to the uh, accounting proper, we shall be able to take care and uh, to understand them as expected. Now, we have discussed the sales day book, uh, return inward. We have discussed process day book, and we have also looked at the process uh, return day book or return outward. And they deal majorly with credit sales and credit uh, process. Now let's look at the general journal. It's also a day book. We say this is a book used to record entry that cannot enter into any other book of original entry. Please let's take note. It's possible the, the company is not limited, is not uh, the transaction of the company is not limited to buy and sell it on credit. Are you okay? It's not limited to buy and sell on credit. There are other when you buy goods on credit or you sell goods on credit, that one will go with what we have discussed. But if you acquire maybe a fixed asset, you know, a fixed asset does not go with a uh, process day book, it goes with general ledger. Or you can also want to look at the opening balances of the previous accounting year. Last year we have our balance sheet. Then we want to start account this year. We bring those figure forward. We call it brought forward. Now the asset and liability that we have at the beginning of a particular year can also serve, can, 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 they are all outside the scope of what we have just discussed. All these will be taken care of using the uh, general uh, journal. Let's look at uh, an example here. Here is a score booster limited. That are the following asset and liability, which I'll discuss more of this later on. Uh, on January 1st, 2016, they have the premises 350,000, land 120,000, stocks uh, 50,000, bank overdraft, and the share capital. If you look at all these items we have here, we must put them in the book of original entry. But can we take them into sales? Which one of them can we take into sales day book? None of them because there's nothing like credit here. Is there anyone we can say return the zone inward? Nothing like that. None of them can be taken to possess the book and a possess 
inward, uh, return inward, uh, return outward. Now that is why with the with the defined general journal, please take note. It can be asked in your exams also that a, a document or a book that is used to uh, to record entry that cannot be entered by any other book of original entry is referred to as A, B, C, D as usual. So it's a general uh, journal. Journal is not an account. Journal is just for us to have our item represented. And the uh, one thing about journal is that it also have a sort of a uh, debit and credit. But I don't want us to look at this kind of journal. This is not the journal that we, we are going to discuss detail uh, later or in detail. Just this one is just a source day book. Remember, we have premises, general journal, three fifty thousand, land, general journal, one twenty stocks. What we can observe here is that all these are in form of asset. They are all asset. Whereas when you come to this side, bank overdraft is a liability. Share capital is also in form of a liability on the company, though it's owner's contribution. But all are being referred to as. And then when you look at the uh, overdraft, here is cash book. Cash book will be recorded in uh, overdraft, where cash book is part of the uh, book of original entry. So when you add these two together also, it gives us uh, 520 and 520. So at this point, our account started, we, are, we started balancing our account from this particular uh, point. So that is example. This also is an example of a general uh, journal. Example that I can give to you in exam. We are going to see a typical example of this nature as move ahead. That you should tell us the amount of uh, the total asset and total liability using journal. So these are simple, simple exam questions that I believe. Uh, we need to we can easily get without a uh, uh, stress now let's reflect a little bit here we have discussed some of the uh, item some of this item before that is the source document and book of original entry if I have this invoice as my source document it will enter into says the book. Please says the book. The credit note sent take care of says return or return a inward books. If I have process invoice, it take care of process the book. Then the credit note received as a source document also take our process return or return outward books. Any lodgement slip, i.e. I make a deposit in a bank and I collect deposit slip or check, I receive a check from a customer or any receipt we enter into cash book. As a book of original entry. Then, petty card voucher, we take care of, we enter into petty card's book. Please, all these will be recorded here. This is the book of original entry, these are the source document that filled them. Now, financial correspondence, we enter into general journal. You see, we told you general journal take care of any other thing apart from what we have mentioned. And I believe we can uh, understand this thing properly now. Now, let's look at this example also. This one, they are mainly from the wire question. The June, May, June 29. The question number one there, examiner asks which of the following book of original entry? Which of the following book of original entry is used to record all payment and received by cash or what? Check. Is cash book. Here is credit says, credit process. Any other one apart from what we know to do. So this take care of, of all payment and received by cash or Check that's a check book which of this following that is 2020 09 
Here is 2011, the same YEC, question number 18. Which of these following is an example of subsidiary books? A subsidiary book is a book of original entry. There's another name for books of original entry. That's what we call subsidiary books. We have not talked about control account. We have not mentioned anything like trial balance. We have not talked about cast bank statement. But we know book of regular entry, one of them is cast book. So our option here is this. In the same 2011, question number 25, the examiner also asked that the document from which entry are transfer, the document from which entry are transfer to possess the book is the way bill, no, credit note, no, received. Is a cash purpose? No. Invoice. Correct answer is a process invoice. If you remember, we mentioned it. It's only the examiner uh, trying to play uh, with us here without giving us what we call, without adding process into it. It just say invoice. Either invoice can either free for sales or for process. So the correct answer is D for this. So I, th I think you can see the importance of this particular presentation as it guides us to know uh, most of this most more option that we don't need to crack our brain before we have them so having been able to explain the first two objective of this presentation we shall move to the next uh, objective that is to look at the the concept of accounting uh, equation uh, accounting equation we are now going gradually as i said i'm trying to build this concept from my uh, assumption that some of all that are watching this video has little knowledge of accounting. That is why we started from the a, a kind of what we call a zero based analysis. And I believe by the time you follow our presentation in a sequential order, you shall become an expert in accounting, both in writing your WIC or JAMP exam. You'll be, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be very comfortable and confident in sitting for the exam. And uh, uh, it's better for you to also understand that these days, the, the, the admission in the university now is now based on points, number of A's you have. So if you have A in accounting, for example, it's, it's a plus to you to have a very good point. The, the error of having let my people go of uh, credit C6, C6 or C4 or C5 no longer advisable. Therefore, we should try as much as we can to listen properly to what we are saying. And uh, if you have any question, you also we, we, we can you can join us on our WhatsApp group. Then we shall also add, uh, address your question uh, uh, as expected. Now, accounting equation. Uh, when we say equation, we must have a left and right side, and there must be something equal sign uh, before you can have equation. So basically, what we are trying to say here is that the company has an asset or has some assets. This asset does not come free. When you start your business, you have motor vehicle, for example. Motor vehicle, you have motor vehicle. One, you equally have building, you have furniture and everything. These are assets. But you bought this item with your own money. This money you brought into the business, we call it equities or owner's equity or capital. So at the elementary stage of business, it is expected that the company asset is financed mainly by the owner's contribution, otherwise referred to as equity capital. So at that point in time, asset will equal to equity or equal to capital. Now, as time goes on, you might need to expand your business by borrowing or acquire some item on credit or take some loan. Those things you also got from the top party, you use them to acquire more assets. So the asset will also increase. Since you don't have your own money, your own money will remain constant, but you borrow money. So what you are borrowing to acquire more assets, so at this, this, is, this is what we call a, a first step or first stage of business. 
It might be the subsequent stages or the second stages of business. Whereas the asset base is increasing, but the increment is base is financed from the third party, not from the owner's equity. But at the end of the day, we still expect that the total asset of the company is either being financed by the owner's contribution, capital or owner equity, plus the one is financed from the third party in form of borrowing or buying things on credit. So this is a concept of what we refer to as accounting uh, equation. We are going to do more of this uh, later on and in the, in the subsequent uh, presentation. But we must know that financial accounting is based upon the accounting equation. This is what we need to understand. The basis of financial accounting is accounting equation. And if you uh, uh, go back to our first presentation, when we were discussing the principle of double entry uh, system, we said is also based on accounting equation and this is exactly what we are trying to say so as i said please kindly listen to the first video so that you can understand this particular uh, area the better so mathematically we expect at the point in time that the asset must the, the asset side of a company account must equal to the liability plus equity or the capital side of that particular company if it is not equal you will say it will be said that your account is not balanced Say for example, if a company should have a total 30 trillion naira worth of asset, and uh, if another asset with 200 uh, naira liability, you don't need anybody to tell you that the remaining balance is from the owner's capital. That is just the idea. So let's take it, and I want us to take this particular equation with you at this point I will, I will, we are going to make reference to it in our subsequent uh, presentation that the asset is equal or equals capital plus liability so if i have capital 10 i have assets 10. however if i will add a liability of 10 borrow money of 10 then my asset will become 20. if tomorrow i bring more let's say another 10 asset become 30. so this is how this thing will be going gradually like that your your company will be growing gradually and we are going to see this from your uh, account and this is what we are going to see as well mostly in your balance sheet this is how this is basis of your balance sheet as we are going to see now let's quickly define all these key terms here we talk about asset. Asset are valuable resources that are owned by a firm. Please take note, valuable. We don't need to go beyond this. I will have I'll define them in line with accounting standard. That is uh, our our IAS uh, international accounting standard uh, one or so or IAS sixteen is go beyond this particular level. So I don't want to know that, but it must be valuable. We'll take note. It's not just any asset. Remember, a mainframe computer of uh, 1926 can no longer valuable when you can have your palm top uh, lap, lap, uh, your laptop these days so take note of that the word valuable here is that I, I lay emphasis on this because examiner can want, we want to ask in obg especially for the jam student these are the technical language they want you to uh, focus more on then also they represent uh, they, they, they represent probably the future economic benefit that must be economic benefit accrued before you can call something an asset you must expect that thing to give you future economic benefit and uh, they arise as a result of past uh, transaction i think this is a standard definition of an asset but take note asset can be grouped into two we have current asset a current asset is an asset that are expected to be used by the company just for 12 months or less than 12 months or for within the one year their assets should be used and cease to exist however we all we call a fixed asset or we call non-current asset please take note either of these two this is a new name but some of us some of our uh, examiners still use fixed asset that's where we we still repeat fixed asset these are assets that are expected to be used by the company more than one accounting period, i.e. more than one year. So if I have my computer to be used in a business and it's good, I'm going to use it more than one year, it becomes a fixed asset. However, 
if I should buy, let's say, a packet of biro, and I'm going to use it within one month, it's become a current asset. So these are things that we need to take note of there in the, trying to distinguish between these two. The next item is liability. Liability represents obligation. We are asset represent resources of the firm, and they, they are pro, they are they, they are probable future sacrifice of economic benefit which arise as a result of past transaction. You 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 buy something on credit. You have enjoyed that particular benefit now. So you must pay back the money in future. That's a future sacrifice. And because of it has occurred, because you have already collected the goods and you have used the goods. So you must pay based on the past transaction. Then liability also can be defined as current and non-current, what we call long-term liability. Current, as name imply, is liability that you have to settle. You have to pay back within 12 months. Within 12 months. Whereas non-current liability is the one you can pay back more than 12 months. Now the next point here is the equity, owner's equity, what we call capital. At elementary level, we call it capital. This represents the owner's residual interest. This is your own interest, what you have. In the asset of the business. Remember, we say asset of the company is equal to capital plus liability. The meaning is that part of this asset is from here, while part is from here. So by the time you take part of asset, you give it to the, the, the this liability, what is remains your residual interest. That we call it that's what they call it residual interest in asset of the business. And residual interest is another name for owner equity, or we also call it uh capital. Now both liability. And the uh, owner's equity represent claim on the asset of the business. You remember, asset is equal to capital plus liability. This people, this debt uh, liability has a claim on the asset. The owner also has a claim on the asset because the asset is acquired by the completion of these two uh, items. Now, in June 2014, the examiner, the, that's the WAIC exam, uh, examiner, asked. They, they ask us to define and list two classifications of each of the following asset and liability. I believe by now you should get your full marks from there. Now, the next thing we need to do, let's quickly look at this. Let, let, let's put this accounting equation in a proper perspective. Uh, if you look at this, I have liability side there, capital, loan, that's the from bank, current liability, you see, this is current liability. This is the capital, owners' equity, long-term liability, bank, current liability. So this is the liability side. Three component on this side. The all put together give us this. We use all this money, this owners' contribution. We borrow from the bank. We borrow something on credit. We have not paid some. Outstanding fee, all these put together, we use them to acquire this asset. Look at asset. From them is fixed asset, land and building, machinery, computer. These are fixed asset. Current asset, stocks, debtor, cash, and bank. So this is these are current assets. So all equal. They must equal to one another. So that is accounting uh, equation. Next, to quickly look at the ledger. Remember, we say from the book of original entry, we move to the ledger. And the ledger basically are books of final entry, contain the various accounts. Now, this is where we start talking about account. What we have been doing so far is bookkeeping. Remember the difference between bookkeeping and account? Good. If you listen to our first video, you will know the, day or the, the, the details. Uh, which entry in, in the books of original entry are transferred? We transfer from book of original entry to this. For example, Process ledger books, this contain all the account of supplier. Supplier are those that we recorded in where? In the process day books. Sales ledger also contain all the account of customer. The customer account or the customer have a source, has a, a, sales day, uh, a, a book of original entry of what? Sales day the books. The third one is general ledger please take note don't miss up general ledger with general journal i hope you can try to distinguish between the two this contain all the rest of the accounts 
like asset account, expenses, loss account, and also the total purchase account, total sales account. Total purchase here mean both credit and uh, cash. However, only only credit here yeah. credit process credit sales but in the general ledger general ledger has account of all that is what we need to take note of it take care of account of all i hope we are getting neat clear now these are our ledgers looks like i have the date I have particular, I have amount. So this is the credit side, a debit side. Here is a credit side. You remember last time we also discussed how to post, which ones will go to the debit and the credit side of this particular item. Now we are, have also give you some of these uh, past questions from the examiner, which I believe if you go through them, you shall be able to understand them uh, uh, proper. So to summarize this particular lecture, uh, I would like to look at this. That if you look at source book, these are my source document. Please take note of that. This is the Amini. Just to summarize what we have discussed. That is how we record them in form of journal or in form of ledger. Debit and credit. Debit and credit. And also, uh, the overview of what we have discussed is that the business document is here, upon which I have transaction. Then you can see credit forces, day book, credit sales, sales day book, return inward, return inward day book, return outward, outward day book, cash, receipt and payment, petty cash, unusual transaction that is not part of what we have mentioned here, then general ledger. General journal. The old journal go to cash book, debtor ledger, creditor ledger, and uh, also go to uh, general ledger. Then from general ledger, we move to trial balance. So the next presentation we are going to have, we shall discuss details more of this trial balance, and also to tell to, to discuss more on analytical cash book and petty cash book. And uh, in the trial balance, we shall be able to look at the type and the treatment of error and use of a uh, suspense uh, account. Uh, we would like you to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and like, uh, also to like and share our video with your colleagues. Uh, see you in the next presentation. Uh, thank you for your time.